In this video, we're going to learn how to do matrix transformations. You'll find some exam questions in the video's description that you can try afterwards. We previously learned how to multiply matrices. For example, if we take a 2x2 two two matrix and a 2x1 matrix, we can multiply them. We do 2, 0 and 1, 3. So 2 times 1 is 2 and 0 times 3 is 0 and 2 add 0 is just 2. And then we do 1, negative 1 with 1, 3. 1 times 1 is 1, and negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, so 1 take 3 is negative 2. Now when we're looking at matrix transformations, we want to imagine that each of these 2 by 1 matrices actually represents a coordinate. So if we look at the matrix 1, 3, imagine the top number, the 1, is an x coordinate, and the bottom number, the 3, is a y coordinate. Then we've got the coordinate 1, 3. Let's mark that and call it A. Now let's look at the other 2 by 1 matrix, which was the result of timesing the two matrices together, 2, negative 2. Again, the top number will be x, and the bottom number will be y. So we've got the coordinate 2, negative 2. We'll label that a dash. So what we've shown here is that if you take a point, 1, 3, and then multiply it by that matrix, 2, 0, 1, negative 1, you end up with the point 2, negative 2. This is equivalent to saying that the matrix has transformed point a to the point A dashed. In this diagram here, the point A is known as the object, it's the point we started with, and the point A dash is the image, the point we end up at. Now let's look at how a question could be worded. So imagine we have a matrix M, which will give 3, 1, negative 1, 3, and then the question may be worded, work out the image of the point A, which is coordinate 1, 5, under the transformation represented by M. So M is a matrix and it represents a transformation. If you take a point A and multiply it by the matrix M, it will give you a point A dash, which is the image of that point. So we'll start with matrix M, then we'll write the point A, 1, 5, in a matrix form, so 1, 5, and then we just multiply them. So we'll do 3, 1 with 1, 5, 3 times 1 is 3, 1 times 5 is 5, 3 add 5 is 8, and then we do negative 1, 3 with 1, 5, Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, 3 fives are 15, and negative 1 add 15 is 14. So 8, 14, written as a coordinate, represents the image, which we would label A dashed. So the answer to the question is A dashed equals 8, 14. Now let's return to the coordinate axes we drew earlier. If we mark on the following points, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0, and then join these up, we form a square. Since this square has side length 1, it's known as the unit square. You need to be aware of various transformations of the unit square. So we're going to start off with a transformation represented by the matrix 3, 0, 0, 3. The goal here is to transform each of the points of the unit square by this matrix, and then try and interpret what's actually happened. So we'll start with the point 0, 0. If we multiply this, then we do 3, 0 with 0, 0, which just gives you 0, and 0, 3 with 0, 0, which gives you 0 as well. So the point 0, 0 transforms to itself. It doesn't actually move. What about if we do the point 1, 0? Well, if we do 3, 0 with 1, 0, we get 3, and 0, 3 with 1, 0 gets you 0. So the point 1, 0 does actually move. It transforms to the point 3, 0. Let's mark that on the diagram. We'll move on to the next point, so this time we'll do the point 0, 1. So 3, 0 with 0, 1 gives you 0, but 0, 3 with 0, 1 gives you 3. So the point 0, 1 moves to 0, 3. Again, let's mark that on the diagram. And there's only one more point on the square we need to do, which is the point 1, 1. So if we do this one, 3, 0 with 1, 1 gives you 3, and 0, 3 with 1, 1 also gives you 3. So the point 1, 1 would transform to the point 3, 3. So what we end up with is a square again, but it's much larger. Instead of side length 1, it's side length 3. If you think about the transformations that you've learned at GCSE, then you can see that this matrix just represents a transformation, which is an enlargement. It's specifically an enlargement, scale factor 3, about the origin. What about if the matrix was 2, 0, 0, 2? Well, this would be exactly the same, only the square wouldn't get 3 times bigger, it would get 2 times bigger. So this represents an enlargement, scale factor 2 about the origin. We can even do this with negative numbers. 
So this matrix here would represent an enlargement scale factor negative 4 about the origin. You could even generalize this. So a matrix with k on the diagonals like this would represent an enlargement scale factor k about the origin. And that's the first one you need to know. Now let's look at another matrix. This one, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Again, we're going to transform all four of the points. So we'll start with 0, 0. And this one's quite straightforward again. We end up with 0 and 0. Now we'll transform the point 1, 0. So 1, 0 with 1, 0 gives you 1. And 0, negative 1 with 1, 0 gives you 0. So those two points both don't move. Now let's look at the point 0, 1. 1, 0 with 0, 1 gives you 0. And 0, negative 1 with 0, 1 gives you negative 1. So the point 0, 1 would move. It's going to move to 0, negative 1. So let's mark that on the diagram. And finally, the point 1, 1. So we do 1, 0 with 1, 1, which gives you 1. And 0, negative 1 with 1, 1, which gives you negative 1. So the point 1, 1 would also move. It moves to the point 1, negative 1, which I've marked on the diagram. So you can see the bottom two points of the square stayed the same, but the top two points of the square flip below the axis. So we end up with a square like this. We can see therefore that this matrix represents a reflection, specifically a reflection in the x-axis, which has equation y equals zero. There's a similar matrix for a reflection in the y-axis, or the line x equals zero. So if these points were to map over to here like this, it would be under this matrix. So this matrix represents a reflection in the y-axis, or the line x equals zero. There are two more matrices that you need to know that also give reflections. So we'll do this one. So we'll do this times 0, 0, which gives you 0 and 0. And then with 1, 0. So 0, 1 with 1, 0 is 0. And 1, 0 with 1, 0 is 1. So this point does move. And then 0, 1 with 0, 1 gives you 1. And 1, 0 with 0, 1 gives you 0. So this point also moves. And finally, the point 1, 1. So 0, 1 with 1, 1 gives you 1. And 1, 0 with 1, 1 gives you 1 again. So this point doesn't move. So the point 0, 0 and 1, 1 remained where they were. But 1, 0 went to 0, 1. And 0, 1 went to 1, 0. So those two points swapped places. This therefore represents a reflection, but in this diagonal line here, which has equation y equals x. So we can say that this matrix here represents a reflection in the line y equals x. Now how about this matrix? The same, but with negatives. So for 0, 0, no surprises here, we get 0, 0 again. For 1, 0, we get 0, and then negative 1. For 0, 1, we get negative 1 with 0, and finally 1, 1 moves to negative 1, negative 1. So this time the point 0, 0 stayed where it was, but the other three points moved. I'll show you that now on the diagram. So 1, 0 moved to 0, negative 1, 0, 1 moved to negative 1, 0, and 1, 1 moved to negative 1, negative 1. So they've all been reflected in the line y equals negative x. So this matrix represents a reflection in the line y equals negative x. And that's all your reflections. Now let's have a look at this matrix. So 0, 1, negative 1, 0. If we transform 0, 0, we get 0 and 0. If we transform 1, 0, we get 0 and negative 1. If we do 0, 1, we get 1 with 0. And finally, 1, 1 gives you 1, negative 1. Now, if you watch the diagram, I'll show you what's happened to each of these points. The shape has turned like this. So this matrix represents a rotation, 90 degrees, clockwise direction about the origin. We also have this matrix. You can probably guess where this one's going. So if we do 0, 0, we get 0, 0. If we do 1, 0, we get 0, 1. 
If we do 0, 1, we get negative 1, 0, and finally 1, 1 is going to give you negative 1, 1. So this time it turns, but in the other direction. So this matrix represents a rotation again, 90 degrees, but anti-clockwise about the origin. And there's only one more matrix you need to know, and it's this one. So 0, 0 goes to 0, 0. 1, 0 goes to negative 1, 0. 0, 1 goes to 0, negative 1. And 1, 1 goes to negative 1, negative 1. So if you look at the diagram now, you'll see that this is a rotation, but half a turn. So this matrix represents a rotation 180 degrees about the origin. And that's all of the matrices you need to know. So let's review the ones we've seen. If we have a matrix with some numbers on the diagonal, but zero is everywhere else, this is an enlargement scale factor k about the origin. We have this matrix, which is a rotation 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, and this one, which is a rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin, and the one we most recently saw, a rotation 180 degrees about the origin. We also had four reflections, this which is a reflection in the x-axis, this a reflection in the y-axis, a reflection in the line y equals x, and a reflection in the line y equals minus x. You need to know all eight of these transformations for your exam. Now you have two choices. One is you can just memorize all of them, which some students choose to do. Alternatively, you can derive them quite easily, and I'll show you now with an example. Imagine we wanted to find out the matrix which corresponds to a reflection in the line y equals x, so a reflection in this line here. What we do is we write out the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. Then we look at the first column of this matrix, but read it as though it's a coordinate. So the x coordinate is 1, and the y coordinate is 0, so we've got the point 1, 0 which is marked here on the diagram. Then we consider where this would go under the transformation. So if this reflects in the line y equals x, it would reflect over here to the point 0, 1. So what we do is we write out a new matrix, but replace 1, 0 with 0, 1. We do the same with the other column. So now this column here, read that as a coordinate, the x point is 0, the y point is 1, so it's the point 0, 1, which is marked here on the diagram. Now where would that reflect to? It would reflect back down to here, to the point 1, 0. So again, in the next column, we just write 1, 0. And this here is the matrix which represents that transformation. It will work for all of the matrices that you need to memorize. I'll show you a second example. So imagine we were trying to find a rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. So start with the identity matrix. We've got the point here, with x coordinate 1 and y coordinate 0, so this point here, where would that go to if we rotated it 90 degrees anti clockwise about the origin? Well, if we rotate it, we can see it maps up to this point here, so 0, 1. So we get a new matrix and put 0, 1. Then check this point here, so the point with x 0 and y is 1, so this point up here, 0, 1, where would that map to if we rotated it? So if we rotate it round, you'll see this one goes to negative 1, 0. So in the matrix, we write negative 1, 0. And sure enough, that's the matrix which represents this transformation. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget there are some exam questions in the video's description you can try. Check out what I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.